Hello and welcome to Biostats Quid. In my last video, we learned how to create and customize filing plots by plotting a particular variable against another. In this video, we will learn two ways on how to create many violin plots for a lot of different variables. As always, you can find the code I'm using in this tutorial at biostatsquid.com, where you can also find a step-by-step -step explanation of the code, or you can just get the entire script from Biostatsquid um, GitHub page. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Now, sometimes we might be interested in plotting many different variables. For example, if we go back to our data set, we have many different columns we might want to plot. So not only sepal width, but pedal length and pedal width and so on. So we can just copy paste um, this chunk of code and just change the y axis but sometimes you just have too many columns so i'm going to show you two ways of getting a lot of filing plots for many different variables in an easy easy way or easy ish way okay so one way of plotting all these variables at once sepal width length pedal width and separate length so all these is why first we first need to kind of manipulate our data frame into a long format so we're going to assign this to df long and we use the function melt from the reshape to package that i loaded at the very beginning so we can set the columns we don't need so the ones that we don't want to um, plot so in this case species and treatment so we'll just add them here so it will not affect them you can also use pivot longer maybe you're more used to that but this is kind of a an easy way of doing it so i'll just show you hit so as you can see it just changed this and now we have variable and value so this will have all the variables we want to plot and the values are the actual values that were here so it just kind of changed the format of the data frame from wide to long and this is all we need to use facet wrap which is a great way of showing different things all at once so we will use all this and all this should be fine color dictionary and uh, we can of course add titles and all that but the important thing i'm just going to add the theme as well there we go the important bit is facet wrap so facet wrap and in this case we want to use this squiggly line and this variable column is the one that contains all our variables so we're just basically facet wrap just tells uh, ggplot to plot a separate plot for each of the unique values in this column so i'll just show you what i mean uh-huh error which happened because instead of iris i actually want to use df long and then in y we actually want the variable no the value sorry so let's go back to the f long so this makes sense right the y-axis we want the different values and then for facet wrap we're kind of creating a new uh, plot for each of the unique values in this column so this should work now and there we go we have a separate plot for each of our va um, variables and of course you can customize you know if you want a two by two or three by two or whatever it is you can customize um how this looks like with the theme function everything is customizable so for example i can just use theme axis text dot x and text i'm going to add an angle because I didn't show you this before, but you can also make the labels at an angle if you have very long names, for example. And then we edit this bit here with strip.text. And then I'm actually just going to copy, where did we have it? Maybe this bit here. So I'm just going to make it purple. It's just easier. 
but yeah you can choose whatever color you want and we can also edit the strip background if instead of gray we wanted another color so instead of text this is not text this is element fill um sorry rect for rectangle um so we will fill it that's it in color white and then the contour we want it to be black that's with the color function black and then the size we don't need this the size will be one let's try this uh, something didn't work this bit here now there we go so we can change how this looks as well and as you can see, we have the different group bar plots. If you don't want gr grouped bar plots, you just have to change the treatment to species or just remove this bit like completely. And now ah, we need to change the color again. Do, do, do. Color dictionary. Where's the color dictionary? There we go. Now, there we go. So another thing you can use is facet grid and I'll show you how that works. So facet grid basically has a very similar structure except here we will we will fill by species but we will have a different plot for the treatment condition. So instead of facet wrap we use facet grid and the way it works is we df long that's fine but we use the different variables. So vars variable and vars treatment. So this can remain the same, but we're basically telling it that we want a grid of plots based on the, the column variable and the column treatment. So as you can see, we have the different conditions here and then treat it and untreat it. And of course, if you just change the order of this, which might be better, um, it will just change how the grid is structured. So now we have, this looks a bit better. So now we have treated and untreated, and then we have the different variables here. So that's a nice, easy way of creating many plots at once. Nice. Okay, so the second way you can create many plots at once or in a more efficient manner is by creating a function. Now, creating functions is really an art on its own. So I'm going to go pretty quickly and not cover everything, but it will give you a basic idea of the power of functions and why they're really worth, I don't know, um, mastering, I guess. But um, yeah, they're very useful for, you know, coding wise and to plot many things at once in this case. So the way we do it is first we will decide on a basic plot. So for example, this is my basic plot, right? And uh, in this case, I'm plotting just the sepal width. So we're back to the original example where we're using the iris data set and we define the x-axis, the y-axis and the color in this case. I'm not going to use fill. I said fill to white, but you know, feel free to create your um, violin plot and you know add your theme and so on so now once we're happy with how the plot looks like it's easier to turn into a function and the way we do that is using the function function so i'm going to call my function get violin plots and i'm going to assign it a function so i'm going to copy paste this inside and now this is where the fun begins right so we need to decide what our function needs what are the customizable elements of our function and those will go in here as arguments so for example the data set will be customizable so i'm going to call it data then the x variable the y variable the color variable is customizable and that's kind of it for now. Cool. So now we will substitute each of these elements 
um, in here. Let me just remove this capital letter. So instead of species, we're going to use the X variable instead of Y, the Y variable. And instead of the species, we're going to use call the color variable. But the thing is, um, these are going to be string values. So we want to tell ggplot that they're not actual strings, but they're actual columns from the data set. I forgot this bit. So data instead of iris, I want to be able to use any data set I want. So back to my point, we want these, um, they're going to be strings. So for example, um, species, sql width, whatever we want to use. So we do this by using sim. So wrapping it in this and this call variable. Nice. Now we will assign this ggplot object to p1 and the function will return p1. You can call it whatever you want. Okay. So now we run this function. So now we have a new function in our environment called get volume plots. And we can use it really easily by calling get violin plots. So we just need to specify the data, which is iris, the x variable, species, and then the color variable. I'm going to use species again. So if we now run this line of code, we get a nice violin plot. And as you can see, this is a nice quick way of getting many variable plots because I just need to chain this and now I will have the petal length. Uh, maybe there's no petal length. Let me just check. Petal length. Oh, petal. <laughs> petal. P six A L. Petal length. There you go. So it's a very kind of fast way if you're good at typing. Um, to get a lot of violin plots. So whatever um, you want to plot, you just add it here. Okay, so as you can see, instead of having to cop copy um, huge chunks of code all the time for each of your variables, this just needs one line per variable. So functions are really, really powerful. But you might want to customize um, more stuff like um, being able to edit the title of your axis, for example, or the colors. So we can add more arguments and make more sophisticated functions. I'll just give you a very kind of simple-ish example of it, but feel free to, you know, play around and, you know, make a super function that does a lot more than what I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm going to call this get volume plots version two. And what I'm going to do is offer the chance to edit the title for the x-axis, the title for the y-axis, and the colors themselves. So again, you can choose whatever names you want here, as long as they're consistent and you use the same names inside the function. Cool. So remember that we edit the title for the x-axis and the title for the y-axis with labs. So x will be equal to title.x and y will be equal to title.y. So now when the when ggplot is plotting our data, it will take whatever we assign to title x and title y and pass it on to the labs. So whatever we um, assign to title x will be the title of our x-axis and same for the y-axis. Now, custom colors, as you can imagine, go in here. So instead of scale color brewer, this is for a defined, a predefined color palette, we want to be able to customize those colors. So remember, we use scale color uh, manual. I'm actually going to use fill just for a change. And instead of this in here, we will pass our cost, uh, our values will be equal to our custom colors. Cool. So this should work. So now I'm going to run this fu uh, function. So now we have it in here, um, get volume plots dot two. So I'm just going to copy this line. And now if instead of get volume plots, we want to run get volume plots version two, 
Um, of course, it gives us an error because it's telling us that we didn't define all the new arguments that our function has. So we need to give the function that. So I'm going to just copy them or add them in a new line just so we can um, see it a bit. I'm going to hide this. Um, so we have title X, title Y and custom colors. So title X will be my species and title Y will be sepal length in centimeters. We can add whatever we want in quote mark inside the quote marks because um, they're a string. And then custom colors, I think we can use the one we had before, so our color dictionary. But um, again, you could provide the, the, the colors you want here as well. So that would work. I'll show you in just a minute. So running this, we'll use the custom colors, the color dictionary we have. Um, we can also use red, blue, and green if we want it. Um, that didn't work. Again, um, sorted. It took me a minute or two. So instead of call, we forgot to change this to fill. So of course we were changing the contour, but um, that didn't matter because the scale fill manual is for the actual fill or the color of the, the inside of the violin plots. So let's just rerun this and now it should um, work. And of course it didn't because we still defined the fill. We need to remove this because otherwise they would be colored white, which is what happened. So now you can see red, blue, green, or we can just use the custom colors, the color dictionary that we defined before. So um, they will both work, right? Nice. So I hope this wasn't very confusing, but um, basically you can add as many arguments as you want. Now, it might be a bit annoying to have to add all these arguments um, all the time. So if you want to just make them optional, you can just assign this to null, for example. Uh, null and null. So there are many different ways of doing this. But our, for custom colors, actually, let's just define a set of colors and they will be the default colors. So we can do this with Brewer Pal and we're just going to give it 10 different colors from the, from the color palette set tree. So if we just run this, I'll, I'll just show you. So this gives it 10 different colors with their color codes. So if we don't give it any custom colors, it will just use these. And if we don't give it a title X or a title Y, it will not use anything. It will just, yeah. So if we now rerun this, um, and we, for example, if we don't give it a custom color, it will just use the colors from our uh, from this color palette, and same for the the x axis, the title x and the title y. So uh, as you can see, the titles disappeared because we didn't provide them. So you know sometimes you want to um, give it a lot of arguments, but that can make it very annoying because then you need to provide them. So just adding default arguments um, makes it a bit faster. Now. If we didn't give it call variable, it will give us an error because there is no default um, value for this argument here. So if, you know, if we don't provide it, it will give us an error. Whereas if we don't provide title Y, it won't give us an error because there is a default um, value. Hopefully that made sense. Now, the beauty about functions, of course, is we is that we can use it with any data set. So I'm going to load a completely different data set called diamonds. So I'm going to use get violin plots, um, get violin plots version two. Um, and instead of the iris data set, I'm going to use the diamonds data set. Instead for the x axis, I'm going to use uh, maybe cut. For the y variable, I'm going to use price. For the call variable, where is it? I'm going to use um, color. 
the column color and then title x equals diamond cut and title y equals the price in euro for example um and i'm not going to give it any uh, custom colors so as you can see this works very nicely this time we have many more groups but yeah functions are really amazing to provide us with you know quick plots if we need them nice so of course you could change all these variables feel free to kind of play around and of course with your, if you're not happy with a certain aspect of the plot so i'm going to go back to call variable equals species let's just run this so we have this plot and imagine i want to customize the theme again we can just you know add stuff so for example um i'm going to add chord flip to flip it around and this will flip the plots around or if we want to change the colors we can just add scale fill manual and then whatever we want here and this will change the colors again or you know add your element theme um your theme object and you know customize the theme further so you can always you know create a very um, general um, function that just creates the basic finding plot and then edit each one specifically nice okay so i think that's all for today squid-tastic you made it to the end so this is a nice intro to visualizing your data with ggplot i hope i don't know if i went too fast or too slow please um give me feedback or if you'd like a separate video on how to create functions and how to edit functions and so on there's there's a lot you can do but anyway you can do a similar thing for density plots again um for that you would just use um geom density instead of geom violin but it works pretty much the same However, if you're interested in a separate video for box plots or density plots, leave me a comment down below. If you're interested in more ggplot tips and tricks like saving plots and customizing them, I already have a video which may be useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful and I really appreciate all your comments and support. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.